welcome back to our channel. Happy New Year. Welcome to 2019. It is so crazy. I'm just sitting here at my desk and I just saw this band and it's from Moonlight Magic, January 28th, 2018. I went with Promise this year or last year and I just can't believe, I feel like I was just wearing this. This was a whole <laughs> year ago and it's just sitting here. So that's crazy that it's already been a whole this year. This last year went by like tw We decided that we would start the new year off with a Q&A. So we asked you to give us some questions on our Instagram and y'all always give us way more than we think we're gonna get so we're gonna try to get through these fairly quickly we hope by the end of this you do feel like you know it's better okay I'm gonna scroll all the way down to the bottom question number one what is your favorite quality about each other we do get questions like this quite a bit my favorite quality about Jared is that he it's hard to just pick one that's why I'm hesitating it's not because I don't have a favorite it's because I have too many favorites <laughs> It's that Jared is always forgiving because I don't have that quality as much as I would like to. And every time I answer this question, I feel like I have a different answer. But different seasons of life yeah. call for different favorites that you see in people. So right now, just in life in general, is a very forgiving soul and a very just understanding soul. Not that I've done anything that needs forgiving, but <laughs> if I did, he would forgive me. Oh, For mine about Brett, the first one that comes to mind is... <laughs> It would be like how driven you are as a person and like just how ambitious you are and it's like when you have your mindset on something she does it and like she does that like in business and in life and in just everything in general and whenever you commit to something you always give it more than 100% oh. and especially like with our relationship it's always been that case. I feel like I just halfway do so many things but it means a lot that you think that I actually do them to the best of my ability. You definitely do. <laughs> <laughs> that's I guess that's that Slytherin streak in me. Even though I'm a Gryffindor, I definitely have some Slytherin. Ambitious is definitely that quality. We've gotten this a bunch. I've seen this a bunch, a bunch. Are we going to an international park? Like an international Disney park? And the answer to that is hopefully yes. We don't have anything planned, but it's on our bucket list for sure. I would like to go to one of the ones in um, Asia. Asia. Yeah, so probably Shanghai is the one I would like. Shanghai or Hong Kong are the two I'd probably want to go to. Or Tokyo. So basically all of those. <laughs> Which one would you want to go to most? Out of all, honestly, I'd want to go to Tokyo. I know Shanghai is the newest and has a lot of the new cool stuff, but overall Tokyo would be my choice. I just, all of them. We always said that if we would go over there, If we, we would do, do one, we'd we'll probably just do all three because we may there's not no ever point. make it over yeah. to that part of Asia yeah, There's no point flying over there three times, so. What's your favorite Disney moderate resort? Moderate. Um, Ours is probably going to be the same. Port Orleans Riverside. It would probably be French Quarter if we've stayed there, but we haven't. But so far, Port Orleans Riverside is our favorite. Favorite. Yeah, that was gonna be my answer. I just realized that my Christmas lights aren't on behind me. Hang on just a second. I have to turn them on. I've actually decided that I'm gonna leave them up year round <laughs> because they're magical. <laughs> it's the new year. We haven't taken down our Christmas stuff. I usually take mine down about a week after the New Year's because it takes me a lot of effort to get everything <laughs> up. I'm not trying to just rip it down as soon as I can. So I'm still enjoying them. And I will be leaving my light tip around the window, but we'll be taking the Christmas tree down. All right, next question is, what are y'all hoping will happen in 2019? I think I have a couple things that come to mind. Okay, well, what would you like to happen in 2019? I personally hope that we get our plans together to build a house in yeah. the very near future. That's what I, number one, I hope happens. Me too. And <laughs> second is, this is a bit personal, but I mean, it's really what we hope for in our team. Our goal is to get a lot of stuff paid off. So to get out of debt as most as possible because we've got student loans, cars, all those kind of, you know, real grown up things. Adult things, yeah. So we're gonna try to get as much of that paid down as possible. Okay, we've gotten this one a whole bunch too and it's, do we ever plan on moving to Florida? Do we ever plan on moving to Orlando? Is that a thing that is in our future or that we hope to do? And that answer used to be a hardcore yes <laughs> and now it's a hardcore no because I have been to Disney personally seven times this year. Jared has been five times this year and I can say when you have Disney at your fingertips and you can go as much as you want, you get burned out on it. That's another question we got was honestly guys, are y'all even the slightest bit burn out on Disney and we can say truly right now <laughs> this very second that we're filming this 
or a little bit burnout, we are going to take need, a break. We just need a break for a little while just to kind of reset and refresh from that, I Let think. some things open, let yeah. some new things happen. Toy Story Land was fun, but we've already done it a lot. A lot more than most people have done, other than people that live there. We also want to be near our family when we do decide to have kids. We got that a bunch. When y'all having kids, we get that all the time. Whenever God says it's in your heart to have kids, you're going to have kids. So that's not in our heart right now. So we're not, kids aren't on our spectrum at this moment. <coughs> well, I think I just skipped about <laughs> 1,500 of the questions by those two. How long have you been together? We actually just celebrated seven years together on Christmas Eve. That's when we officially started dating. And we'll have been married for five years this coming May. This is a good question. Has God always been an important part of your lives? Yes, for me and for Jared yeah. both. We were both raised growing up in the church and it's just something that's just always been a part of what we were raised on and what we yeah. were taught growing up and it still stayed with us uh, even as we've grown into adults now. And I think for me, even if I wasn't raised as a Christian, I think I still would have found my way yeah. to knowing God because I cannot imagine going through life without Him and without having someone to lean on and someone to reach for and someone to help hold me standing upright. You know, Jared can only do so much because he's human and he's normal and we can only hold each other up so much that eventually you need someone else. So I just can't imagine what life would be like if I didn't have his grace. Yeah. Like I would fall flat on my face, <laughs> let me tell you. And there's also something different about growing up in church and then still like coming to know your beliefs and right, what you on your on your own as yeah. as you mature. And having your firm like who you are and what you do believe in and how you view things and, right. and things like that. It's very eye opening and it's very I don't know, it's just an overwhelming feeling to finally become into who you are versus what your parents have taught you to be. And we have done that over the last probably about two years. Any plans on going to Universal Studios or Harry Potter World? Absolutely. <laughs> yes. One thing y'all probably do not know about me, myself, and Jared too, but I am a big Potterhead. Like, I would be completely honest to say that I like Harry Potter as much as I like Disney. That's definitely true for me because before we had this love for Disney together, once we got together and got married, before that, like, I was totally in on Harry Potter way more than anything Disney. Oh, yeah, for sure. Like, Disney, I read all the books, saw yeah, all the movies and all that. Disney was definitely my first love because when I was little, Winnie the Pooh was always my favorite thing and I grew up watching Disney. But when Sorcerer's Stone came out, me and my best friend came Alley. We that was like our thing together. So every year that a new Potter movie came out, that was just our thing, and so it became a tradition, and it just became something that I had in common with my best friend, and we talked about it all the time. We talked about it today. I talk about Harry Potter pretty much every day because I love it so much, so much. So yes, we definitely want to go to Universal. It just hasn't been an option. It costs so much money to go to Universal, even for a day. So we just, it's not something we've been able to do, but we do plan on doing it as soon as possible. But it's <laughs> Speaking of Harry Potter, the next question is, what are your Hogwarts houses? Before you even watch this video, leave it in the comments below what you think each of us are. I think I've already said what I was. This has been an a but... day before, but things have changed a little bit, I think. Yeah. <laughs> so I am, pause it, write in the comments below, and then come back to it and see if you're right. Um, I am a Gryffindor. Better be Gryffindor! And Jared is a Hufflepuff. I know, Hufflepuff! <laughs> And if I had a second house that the sword house would put me into, it would be Slytherin. And if Jared had a second one, it would be Ravenclaw. Yeah. We are a hundred percent opposite completely, but thank God you're not a Slytherin because we <laughs> have found out basically that even though I have basically part Slytherin, I'm very much Harry Potter. Very much. I was even an orphan. It's a real thing. I don't get along with Slytherins. The people that I butt heads with most in life are Slytherins. That's a very Harry Potter thing to do. <laughs> it's crazy because before when we've taken the test, like even Potter more I seem to fit more in a Ravenclaw but when you but, step but back you step and really look and at really it think about it and then like I've taken more and more since then it's like every time now I'm like totally Hufflepuff and think about Hufflepuff they're kind they're loyal they're patient they're fair they're forgiving they're loving they're qu like quick to just be like it's okay guys they're very anti-confrontational and that is Jared summed up into <laughs> A Hogwarts house like yeah. that is like it should be called Huffle Jer because that is so Jared and I am very outgoing very ambitious I'm 
very brave. I'm really not afraid of anything except movie theater bathrooms. Uh, they kind of creep me out. <laughs> Every time I go into Tinsel Town by myself, I'm like, ooh, this is scary. Somebody's gonna come in here and kill me. Do you feel like that when you go in there? Never. Another question, nobody asked this question, but I'm asking this question. <laughs> if you could pick what house you were sorted into based off of traits, what house would you pick to go into? And I would pick a Hufflepuff because I think that they have the most admirable traits. And then it's it's weird, but I'd pick Gryffindor. <laughs> <laughs> I guess just like being a being a man, it's like what you strive to be is brave and courageous and like this big leader. At least, but Jared's a sensitive side of the male and, figure. And so like I like I'm envious of that trait and like what most Gryffindors have. I guess. Aw, see, we complete each other. <laughs> We're meant to be. How do you best help celebrate each other? We just love each other. We love each other the way the Bible says so. I think the biggest thing we always encourage each other on yeah. what like what our dreams are and yeah, what, we, what love we like. We, and we that love sort of each thing. other the way the Bible says. We're forgiving, we're loving, we're supportive, we're understanding, and we try to be those things. That doesn't mean we're always those things, but we try to be those things. And I honestly believe that that's the way to make a marriage work and that's how to make a marriage successful. And we're always open to talking to oh each other gosh. about just about anything. We're story. very I mean, like we, our communication is spot on. Like we don't keep anything. Jared physically cannot. <laughs> like if he stumps his toe and he feels like he has to tell me, he's going to explode if he does not tell me that. Like he can't keep things from me <laughs> at all. Like period. Zero. I can kind of keep secrets. Not in a bad way, but like for surprises and stuff. Kind of except on Christmas. I'm like, you want to open a present? Are you sure? You want to know I got you? But other than that, like when it comes down to the nitty gritty, we are very open and very honest. See, this is a question. Are there any parts of you guys that are a little tired of Disney World? Currently right now, we just need a break. And that's not a forever break. Disney is still like a thing that we do. Just like we can't go seven times in a year again because for us, that is too much. Favorite film of 2018? Ooh. Um... I'm gonna say Greatest Showman. Oh, that was good. Um, actually, just because it was so original. For my 2018 film, it is Christopher Robin. But if I had to pick a second one, since Winnie the Pooh just is my favorite, so naturally I'm gonna pick that. My second one is Mary Poppins. I just saw Mary Poppins, and it's amazing. I loved it. That's probably gonna be very controversial. She went controversial. And saw it without me, y'all. Went saw it with my mom for her birthday. <laughs> Shame on me. But it was very, very good. And I know that's gonna be very controversial because a lot of people do not like remake. It wasn't a remake. It was a number two. Sequel. Future. Ish. It was really good. I liked it a lot. Okay. What is your favorite childhood Disney movie compared to your favorite Disney movie now? Like, gotcha. what was your favorite okay. childhood movie and what's your favorite movie now? Mm. So, I think for me, my favorite childhood movie was Snow White or Pocahontas. I loved both of those because they were two of the first ones that I ever saw. But now, ugh. Okay, what are your childhoods while I think about childhood, it? Childhood, mine was definitely Jungle Book and Aladdin and Lion King. Just some sort of mixture of those three. I think it's kind of still that. But, but yeah, for me, like to say like still favorite, like I really can't, I can't venture much away from those as being my favorite three. For me, I... I mean, I feel like now you like Cinderella more than probably you I did, to. I did. I, I like Cinderella a lot more than I did when I was little. When I was little, I didn't really care about Cinderella, but I wasn't old enough to understand Cinderella, and I wasn't old enough to understand, like, who she was and right. the kind of person she was. That's what makes me like Cinderella, because who doesn't want to be the kind of person Cinderella is? She is, like, golden. She follows the golden rule, like, surpass. Treat others as you would like to be treated, even if they are god awful to you. Forgive them. Love them. I mean, I, I want to be who she is. I want to be a Hufflepuff. <laughs> I'm not. Cinderella is definitely a Hufflepuff. That would be fun to make a video categorizing Disney princesses into their Hogwarts house. Leave a comment below if you want to see us do that. I would have the time of my life doing that. We got a lot of questions about doing a house tour. Mm, our house is very tiny and it's very messy all the time. It's not so much it's messy, it's we, we right now we have a pretty small house and it's just always cluttered. There's just like nowhere and to put we, we just don't have, we don't have enough storage to really get, keep things organized Like here. it'll never be like magically together. <laughs> so. Maybe we, one day when we get our house built. 
Yeah, probably. We'll show you that. Maybe not this one. Um, but our house is 900 square feet. House, not apartment, our home that we live in. It's very tiny. This question says, what are your bucket list places that are not Disney for vacation? My number one is I want to go to the UK. If you watch our videos or if you haven't, hello, my name is Brent and I love the UK. I want to go there so bad. I want to visit all of the United Kingdom. I want to go to London. I want to go to everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> All of it. I want to go to Ireland, Scotland, Wales. I want to go to that entire area region. Yeah. Yes. I want to go to Australia. That would be cool. And other than that, like I, there's not really a lot of other places I want to go. I'm just pretty much a European kind of gal. Like yeah. to the a Western European gal. <laughs> and then I also want to go to Alaska. That's another big one for me personally. What's y'all's middle name? <laughs> My middle name is Nicole. And mine's like the most basic name ever and it's Lee. Okay, what kind of stuff do you guys enjoy doing when you're not working? Working. We just got back from the movie. We just went and saw Wreck-It Ralph. That's pretty much it. We don't really do much. We hang out with our family. We hang out with our friends. We go to movies. It's just kind of your typical. We go on vacation. <laughs> That's about it. We don't yeah. really do it. We don't. We're very boring people. Y'all want us to home vlog? No, you don't. I promise. What's your favorite smell at Disney? Mine's gonna be pirate water. Mine is Fill Our Magic whenever they pop the champagne. And it's also the same scent as Flight of Passage, which is also the same scent as there's another one. Oh, Fiji. Fiji. So yeah, like that's my favorite yeah. smell and it's convenient because I can smell it in three places. Can you share more about your property and our building plan? Basically we bought land in our hometown and we have plans to build probably within a year. Yeah, probably 2020 is yeah, going to be that's the our goal at least right now. We are either going to draw our own house plans, we have looked at house plan after house plan with true fashion of who I am and who Jared is. We want a house that looks like it was found in the middle of the countryside of England. Like We don't want a traditional Louisiana house. We want something very different. I like the gothic style. I like the cottage style and finding those two things and smushing them together. Kind of not very easy. So we might end up drawing our house plan. So that's really all we are right now. We bought five acres and it's gorgeous and green and beautiful and has old trees and it's magical. Okay, I shared this on our Instagram story because it made me laugh. What is your cure for hiccup? Is that the most funny question oh, ever? Oh gosh. Let me just, let's just go ahead and say, when she gets the hiccups, it like has a direct, I don't know, Jared connection to my nerves. when I get the hiccups. He looks at me and he goes, can you stop? And I'm like, I can't help it! Because if she hiccups once, she hiccups 800 times. I can't help it. So no, I don't have a cure because I don't know how to get rid of them suckers. And the other day I was super sick and I couldn't breathe out of my nose, couldn't breathe out of my mouth. And then I got the hiccups at the same time and I was like, this is miserable. And I held my breath. I drank water. I tried to take deep breath. No one was there to scare me, but that doesn't usually work either. But like, I don't know. If you have a cure for hiccups, please let me know because I get them about twice a week. Would, Something's wrong with me. I would much appreciate it also. You know, but, oh, but Jared gets the hiccups and I'm like, you got the hiccups? He's like, yeah. And I'm like, okay. I get the hiccups. He's like, why are you hiccuping? And I'm like, ah! Okay, besides ourselves, who are your favorite Disney or non-Disney YouTubers to watch? We are definitely not our favorite. <laughs> My favorite Disney YouTuber to watch, to be honest, we really don't watch Disney YouTubers because our life is consumed with Disney. My work is consumed with Disney. We're always editing our own vlogs. We don't have a whole lot of time to watch. To be honest, and this is, I, it can't really be offensive because I'm American, but <laughs> when you really think about it, all I really watch are British YouTubers. So like, Anytime Ellie comes out with a video, she's my friend. She also has Disney videos, so I guess she would be classified as my favorite Disney YouTuber because she's British. She just got lucky, <laughs> and I love her, and she's my friend. But we also, when we do watch them, we watch Rock and Promise. We watch, I don't know, we really don't really watch any. We just try to watch our friends to keep up with them more than anything. My favorite non-Disney YouTuber would have to be Gabriella Lindley, Velvet Ghost. She just does daily vlogs, makeup videos, sit-down videos. She just does everything. She's British, and she's a lot like me, so I like to watch her. And then my personal, for me personally, Casey Neistat's my favorite non-Disney. Very basic, just, but I mean, he's yeah. amazing. Like, you just can't beat Casey Neistat at all. He's pretty amazing. He's a good person. He makes good videos because that's what his life revolves around is yeah. filmmaking. So. And then us together, we also started Bucket List Family Love there. Oh my gosh! If I had to pick my favorite people, people, <laughs> anything, yeah, it's incredible. the Bucket List Family. I want to be them when I grow up. I want my <laughs> kids to be them when they grow up. Like, if you want to look up to somebody and you were looking for a YouTuber, 
family to watch and you're a family or you're by yourself or you literally just need someone to make you smile, The Bucket List Family is for sure it. I also watch Cherry Wallace. She is a pretty vlogger blogger. She doesn't vlog, but she does sit down videos. She does a lot of unboxings and I really like her. She's also British. <laughs> uh, there. Uh, Bucket List Family is very much not. He's Hawaiian and she's grand old American, so broke my streak. So I guess our favorite ones are Gabriella Lindley, Casey Neistat, The Bucket List Family, and Cherry Wallace. They're all completely different people. They all have different like audiences. If you were a jelly bean, what flavor would you be and why? Yeah. <laughs> <Jared> said, <laughs> I would like to say I would be sour grape because it's my favorite flavor. It's also very rare. You can only get it in a packet. You can't just go into a store and get a bunch of sour grapes. So I would hope to be that one. I would like to be very unique and very rare. And I come with a lot of people that are just like me. But they're a little bit, they're different colors, but they like the same thing as I do. Like, like the sour pack. There's all different colors in there, but they all kind of have the same gist of things. They all kind of go together. But if you were peach, I mean, you might not like sour grape. Y'all might not get along. I kind of stole my answer. I was going to say like regular grape. And the reason I was going to say regular grape is just because it's common and dependable. And grape's just, just this generic <laughs> flavor that a lot of people... Cheer bear! <laughs> that a lot of people like, but it's you can always count on it because it's always there. <laughs> Grape and sour grape. There we go. We work well together. Want any more dogs? Well, if we wouldn't have got a new laptop, Jared has informed me we would have gotten a Dalmatian. This is from Allie. Um, if you and Jared were a childhood board game, which one would you be and why? Oh wow, what a question. So, I would be Candyland because I love candy. I love color, I love happy things, and that is pretty much what that game is. Colorful, happy, and about candy. Mine would be Hi-Ho Cheerios. The reason I say that is because uh, it's just a classic, and I feel like every kid learns to play that game. I think especially like our generation, for some reason, we came up playing that game. You don't even like cherries, though. But I love the game. It doesn't matter if I like the fruit or not. But I used to play You'd that game. You'd be like Hi-Ho Blueberries. <laughs> I mean, if you could change the fruit, then have at it. But my mom and I always played that game together when I was little. And it's just one that's just always stuck with me and I always love that game. So I would pick it because of who I am and Jared would pick it because who he loves. His mama. And because it's a classic and I love classic things. True. Favorite cuisine? Generally we would just probably say Cajun food because yes. that's what we're used to. Where you like both like Cajun. Your pets can suddenly speak but you only get to ask three questions. Oh my god. What are they? Kipper would well exceed three questions. <laughs> I would say, are you happy? And I would hope they would both say yes. <laughs> I would say... Who do you love more, me or your mother? <laughs> And then we would add, ask them okay, what I, I, their favorite movie is. <laughs> Kipper's is on number one dimension. I might would ask him a different question. I know, that really is his favorite movie. I know one for sure. Okay. I would ask each of them what their favorite toy is because every week it seems like it changes. Yes. And so that's I'll, a good one. I would, make, favorite I would make them decide, okay, which one's your favorite toy that you can't take away, like your brother can't take away from you because they always fight for the same toy. And they always act like that toy that they're taking away is their favorite, even though they have like 10 favorites. There we go. Okay. That was, I don't know if that was three, but that's hard. That's a hard question. Weirdest thing you did as a child. Well, I pretty much haven't stopped being weird yet. So, what was the weirdest thing you did as a child? I don't know. You didn't do anything weird. You didn't do that. anything. You were a working kid. Yeah, you, I asked you, I'm like, did you do this as a kid? No. Did you do this as a kid? No. And I'm like, what did you do? Read library books? No. I don't know about weirdness, but I know probably like most embarrassing thing was... <gasps> I know your most embarrassing thing and you were not going to say it. And probably not most embarrassing. But <laughs> this is the second embarrassing thing. When I was in, I don't know, if I feel like maybe second or third grade spelling bee, I misspelled does. Does. <laughs> D-O-E-S. Does. I misspelled that word in the spelling bee. <laughs> I got ahead of myself and spelled it D-O-S-E. <laughs> Somebody was just looking at me like... That's dose. That's dose. And I just saw this card come up that said no. Um, okay. The most embarrassing thing, I, or the weirdest <laughs> thing I've ever done. I'm telling you, everything I did as a kid was weird. Everything. Okay, here's a weird thing. I don't do this anymore, but this was the thing I had to do. I would not read a book unless I was in a tree. That's pretty weird. But it's just who I was. Like, I had to climb a tree to read a book, and we had AR points and it was brutal I got grounded so I had to read a lot of books so I am a pro tree climber because yep 
what was the best Halloween costume you've ever had? Mine was a genie, and the reason I say it was my, the best one, because my mom and my Mimi stayed up and handmade my costume until 2 in the morning, and my mom is not a night owl. That was like basically 6 a.m. no sleep for her. And it was this fabric. It was made out of this fabric, like the, the colored fabric with the little blue on sequins, and it was blue. And the whole thing was just magical. I loved it so much. Jared, how get some water? Uh, mine was the white Power Ranger because my grandmother, she actually made it for me when I was Sentimental costume. When I was in like kindergarten or I think kindergarten or first grade, but it was it was the bomb.com back in the day. We got this a lot. How did y'all meet? We had some friends introduce us and we have pretty much been together since the day we met. <laughs> Seriously, have we not? Yep. The day we met, we decided that we were going to be together forever, and here we are. We've gotten this question two, um, two times. What is the best thing about vlogging, and what is the worst? Like, I think one of them was, what was the most beneficial part about it, and what's the worst? Uh, beneficial would be the connections we've made. Friends that we've friends made. That we've we made have made. That sort of thing. So many friends, and they always say internet friends are not real. Our our internet friends have become real life friends. Yeah. We have people. I mean, if you see um, our relationship with Josh and Joey, Joey is one of my best friends. I could not make it in life without her. So it definitely have to be friendships for sure. Connections, yeah. friendships, absolutely. People we've gotten to know. The least beneficial part about it is comments can be really ugly. I just do not understand why people think that the world needs to be any worse. Why putting any more negativity into the world is a good thing. Someone is going to be watching this video right now and they are going to find something bad to say. And let me tell you, if you are that person, the world is ugly enough, it's dark enough, and it's mean enough without you putting any extra into it. It doesn't need your help. And how much more of an impact and positive like footprints you can leave if you choose to be happy and encouraging and uplifting and that makes you feel so much better and so much more whole when you are that. All you have to do is break the trend. When you're used to being mean and you're used to being ugly, it's easy to keep that up. But if you stop for four seconds and say, I'm not going to be that way anymore. That's not beneficial to me or anyone else. I'm going to be happy today and I'm going to be positive today. If you just do it for one day, it'll change your life. How many pearls do you have from the Japan Pavilion? Do you wear them? I've probably got probably five, five, five or seven. Seven. And no, I do not wear them. Jared's dad is a jeweler, and every time I open one, I say, Oh, we're not gonna put it into a thing. We'll get his dad to do something with it. They're all sitting right in that room, right beside us, in my jewelry box, in that little baggie that I received them in. What is your favorite non alcoholic drink at Disney? Do you want me to go? Yeah, go ahead. Mine is the Night Blossom. It is hands down my favorite drink. Probably alcohol or non-alcohol or anything. It's non-alcoholic, but it's in Pandora. Yours is not the Night Blossom. You don't like it. You think it's too sweet. Yeah, definitely not that. Would you consider the Donut Flood a, a drink? Yeah. Yeah. It's got straw in it, so I would say so. Yeah, uh, that would probably be mine. Okay, this is a good one. It's very interesting. I've been thinking about this because I read this earlier, and I was thinking about it when we were in the movie. I have a good question. If you could spend the night in any country in Epcot, which one would you spend the night in? No, so you have to go around and think, which one's the coziest? <laughs> I would probably spend the night in, I would probably spend the night in Mexico because it's dark in there. You could have a good sleep if you wanted to. If you're someone that needs to do like rock and move, you could hop on the ride. You don't have any drops so you wouldn't fall off your little row. Probably Mexico. It has blankets in there so you have a blanket. <laughs> stuffed animals so well, you have really, a pillow. You really put some thought into this. Well you have to think, if you're going to sleep in it, it's got to be a comfy <laughs> one. That one's got a place you can lay down. They've got benches, they've got food if you get hungry. <laughs> I mean like. There's margaritas, you can't fall asleep, you can just go have you a little margarita, get sleepy, and go sleep. I don't know, Norway seems cozy to me. Where are you gonna sleep? I'll s sleep on the frozen ride. I'll just get in the boat, snuggle up in there. And what happens when you drop? I'm gonna make it stop. I'm not gonna keep going around and around and around. No, you have to leave it as is. It's as is. I'm still picking Norway, even if I can't really figure out where to sleep there, that's what I'm saying. Because I could still go get school bread anytime I want to. Like if you were only confined to one country, yeah. He would probably do that. I would. Mexico is not my favorite pavilion, but it seems the most logical to spend the night in. I would agree with that. <laughs> Brett, how do you get your hair so shiny and so <laughs> beautiful? Thank you. My hair is this shiny because I do what's called a pm shine on it. It's from Paul Mitchell. I'm a hairdresser, so yeah, that's how. 
and I use good products. I don't use drugstore products, which no harm to you if uh, that's what you use, that's what you can afford, that's what you choose to if you're not someone that spends money on um, professional hair products, but it would be against my nature to say it does not help you to have professional products because it definitely does. If you could give your younger self advice, what would it be? I would tell my younger self to remember your worth and remember that you are loved no matter how others make you feel. Mine would be to kind of branch out and be more sociable because I was very shy when I was young. Very, very shy. Is your red hair natural or do you color it? I do color my hair. What's your favorite TV show? My favorite TV show that too <laughs> are Friends and Gilmore Girls. Those are my two favorites. First one that came to my mind was Friends too. I just think it's just because you know, it never gets old and we can watch it 300 times. It's still the same. What is your favorite holiday snack? I think mine's probably Divinity. I was gonna do Divinity, but you can't say Divinity. You're allergic to nuts. My grandmother used to make them without pecans. Oh, fancy. Mine is Divinity. Normal. <laughs> with pecans in it. What's your favorite kind of pancake? Mine. <laughs> <laughs> ones that I make. My favorite kind of pancakes are Jared's too. I like Jared's pancakes the best. I like plain pancakes. I don't like blueberries or chocolate chips in them. You like chocolate chips. I do like right? chocolate chip ones though. Yeah. What is your second favorite theme park? Mine would be Universal but Jared's never been so. I would have used to said Six Flags because that's what I went to when I was young but it's like when we lived in Dallas and went there, it was we just had so underwhelming. annual passes at Six Flags, and we only went one time, two times. I just didn't like Six Flags at all. Really, the only other one I've ever been to was Silver Dollar City. I'd probably say that one over Six Flags now, honestly. Peanut M&Ms or regular M&Ms? I'm allergic to peanuts, so I have to <laughs> say regular, but... I would say M&M minis because I like those better than regular M&Ms. I like peanut M&M. All time favorite non-Disney movie. It says Z -Z -Z, movies, Z -Z -Z. so maybe I can pick two. So mine would be A Walk to Remember and The Fifth Element. I love both of those movies a uh, bunch. Dumb and Dumber comes to mind because that, that movie literally makes me laugh every time I watch it. It just never gets old. I would have said uh, Remember the Titans, but that's technically a, still a Disney movie, so. Moving on. What live action Disney movie are you most excited for? For. So right now I'm not really excited about any of them except for Lion King. Pretty excited about that. I will not be watching Dumbo. I've now teared up two times. I've seen the trailer for it twice in theaters and I'm like I can't watch this. I can't even watch it. The trailer in theaters. Much less will I be able to watch the actual movie. And yours I know 100% is yes, also. Lion King. I would have said Aladdin but I, I'm very scared that they're not going to do that justice because I, I loved Aladdin so much. I think Aladdin would be my number two. I'm really excited to see what they do with Lion King. Although, actually, I might would pick Aladdin over a Lion King. Will Smith being in it will help, but besides that, I'm a little nervous about it. What is your all-time favorite show to binge watch? Mine is Gilmore Girls. We're friends. They're both my favorite shows, so why not? Yeah, Friends is probably mine. Or I really liked Once Upon a Time. We watched, we binge watched that to death. Like, we watched that. A lot. If you could only pick five rides to ride at Magic Kingdom, what would they be? That would be Haunted Mansion, Pirate, Space Mountain, Winnie the Pooh, and Mine Train. I would sub in Big Thunder for Winnie. Would y'all ever consider a clothing line? We have so many ideas about shirts, but I have my hands full with our ear shop, so I really don't know that we could take on much more. We do have a lot of ideas, though. I would really like to make pins more than I think I would like to make shirts, but I have no idea how to go about doing that. If you know how to make pins, let me know. Okay, this is a good one. Would you take a shorter stay in a deluxe resort of your choice or a longer stay to value? I would say before, I would have said a longer stay and like a moderate or a value but now I would say a shorter stay in a deluxe. Same. What color is your toothbrush? My toothbrush is white. Mine's black. What book are you reading right now? I am reading Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets. I'm not currently reading anything but that, <laughs> that is a goal of mine for this year is to read more. What is your favorite meal to prepare? I like to make chili because it's easy and there's a lot of it and it lasts for a long time. I'm gonna be pancakes because that's like the only thing I'm good at making. Uh-uh. You're good at making ribs. Uh. I would say for him I like when he he makes ribs. That's my favorite thing he makes. Where do you see yourself in three years? More out of debt <laughs> with our house built and have checked off a bit of bucket list places we would like to have visited. Yeah. I would say it's probably the both 
of us have that answer. If we got in this event, what's your 2019 New Year's resolution? I think ours together is to pay off debt. That's the big thing. I want to try to read at least two to three books every month, and Jared's was to read more too. So reading yeah. and paying stuff off. I would say also to eat healthier because I feel lately, it's not that we haven't eaten healthy. I feel like we haven't eaten anything healthy. So we need to definitely try to change our diet just for health reasons. How has your life changed over the last year? We've done more, accomplished more, we've sacrificed more. We have like went for our dreams, we bought the land, and we bought new vehicles. We we adulted a lot more the last year. I quit my old job working for someone else in a hair salon. Started my own business. What's one song you find annoying but yet find yourself singing along to? Baby Shark. <laughs> I can't think of one right now like that. Oh well, we'll do baby shark for both of us. <laughs> Does pineapple belong on pizza? I love Hawaiian pizza. No. Will you have a whole room dedicated to Disney in your new home? Yes, because I will bring my office here to our new house and we have it built and right now it's pretty much either dedicated to positive things Disney or Harry Potter is pretty much the only things that I have in here. Books, Disney, happy things, pins. So just all things magical and um, bookish are Kind of my thing. Sweet tea or unsweet tea? And I'm telling you right now, if we said unsweet tea, we'd probably get struck by the southern god. Jared, he's getting a little iffy here. I've switched to half and half here lately. The more sugar, the merrier. <laughs> How do you guys keep the spark alive after years of marriage? Well, we're honest, we're feisty, and we love each other to no end is pretty much the answer to that. And we still try to experience new things together, like go new places, do new we things. We will feel ourselves to get stagnant, and when that happens, we try to definitely break that and do something to just bring us back to life. We also try to make sure that we stay home when we need to stay home because there was a moment where we felt like we were gone all the time and we just craved yeah, being definitely. home alone <laughs> together. So it's just understanding when you need alone time, when you need go time, when you need social time, when you need what you need. It's important that you embrace those things and give those things attention. You have one hour to spend in one Disney park. How do you spend your hour? I would spend my hour in Magic Kingdom at Casey's. If I had one hour to do what I wanted to, I would immediately go get corn dog nuggets. If I was like by myself, I would probably go to Animal Kingdom and ride Yeti as many times as I could. I would see how many times I could get on and get off. Oh yeah, single rider though. Hey! Yep. If you had to be stuck on one Disney ride forever, not even for like five hours, forever, the rest oh of your gosh. life, what would it be? Definitely not Small World because God, that would be freaking torture. Yeah, but you wouldn't want it to be like a thrill ride either because yeah. you would like you would go unconscious after a while. My would, might would be the through caviaros because- oh, I was thinking that one too. Because <laughs> if you had to be stuck there forever, this is like real logic here. You have to like go by food places so people would like toss you food so you wouldn't starve. You have a place to lay down and there's fireworks and it goes through dark scenes, it goes through light scenes. That's what I was thinking. There's there's a mix of light and dark and it's easy in general the whole way around. Yeah, like I would probably do that one, but it would get boring. Any of them are gonna get boring if you're on it <laughs> forever. All the time. Do you salt your watermelon? I do. Jared, however. I don't eat watermelon. Would you go on an Alaskan Disney cruise? Yes. That's Jared's top bucket list cruise destination is Alaska. If you could build your dream Disney resort, what would it be? Like what would the thing be? I would probably build one kind of like if anyone's been to Las Vegas. Vegas and they've been to New York, New York, how they have like a replica of like the streets of New York and you can go to these different places. I would do that, but I would do it for London or Ireland or one of the places I really want to visit or New York. Like I would want it to be immersive in that way. The streets would be cobblestone and all the stores and the gift shops, everything would be like a storefront and you would feel like you were in these places. I would love to see a fully themed inside out place. That would be really cool. And you could do like different sections of it as a different island. That's cool. Come on, Disney. Where are you at? <laughs> curly fries or waffle fries? Curly fries all day long. Always love got, me and curly cues. Always got to go with the curls for sure. I love me some curly cues. If you could create an attraction for Pixar, like a Pixar attraction, because there's not really many Pixar attractions, what right. would you do? So other than Toy Story, because they have a bunch of those, I would do 100% Brave. Something to do with Brave, like arrows and like riding to the forest. <laughs> I would still love to see it in an inside out thing. For sure. If you could do any Disney one, what would it be? I would probably do... I would, a Moana based yeah, I would 
do a one-on-one. -on -one. What's your favorite Disney snack? Everybody knows this, and it's a Dole Whip. We're probably going for that. Dole Whip, and then also school bread. We know Brett would like to go to the UK one day. What is Jared's dream vacation? Besides Europe, then I, I would say Alaska. All right, guys, that is it for this Q&A. Thank you so much for everyone that put your questions in. If we didn't answer your question, we are sorry, but there were so many. Our camera is about to die, <laughs> and um, we tried to answer as many as we could. So we hope that you feel like you know us a little bit better from watching this. We hope everyone has a magical new year. Yes, absolutely. And good luck, and we hope you are blessed in 2019, and there is so much to come from us. So thank you so much for watching, and we will see you all year long. Bye. Bye, y'all.